Raybot. Today's guest is an esteemed comedian who's worked for many years in the industry and who I consider to be one of the best, a wonderful, innovative comedian. It's Simon Munnery. So let's get started. Uh, you've you've been doing comedy a while now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering what you like about it and what you dislike about it. Hmm. I like laughter. I like it when people laugh. When a, I always liken it to when a when an audience laughs as one. We get what we call in the trade a woof. <laughs> and all laugh as one at the same time. Because early on in a gig, everyone like turn their heads if someone else is laughing and they. But when they all do it as one, it's 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 like when a a flock of birds arcs as as by central command. There's something just beautiful about that. That's okay. What I, like about it. what I don't like about it is the uh, travel and the low wages. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you still on low wages? <laughs> well, my agent says I am. Yeah. Did some really good. No. Yeah. Uh, Make a living. I, I've got I've got a wife and children, and if I. If I knew I was going to have a wife and children, I'd have chosen a different career. <laughs> you know, the sort of the uncertainty, you know, it's a feast for having. No, I've had a good year, thanks. But oh, good to hear. Yeah. So, like, um, have you, is, does TV hold any allure to you anymore? Allure. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, I make TV in a, in yeah. a sense. We my show fail, uh, and make it live. So that's, yeah. I think that's. Um, very interesting that area, being able to speak visually. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking visually. about like uh, TV as in like mainstream TV. Do you think that? Yeah. You well, will I don't call them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. So yeah, I wouldn't turn down a gig on telly. Or <laughs> not a fool, but um, well, you know, on principle. So do you think it would? Ha do you think you would ever have your own TV show on TV again? Again, uh, I don't know. It's not up to me. <laughs> It's not, it's not something I worry about. No, okay, that's what, I'm, that's what I was interested um, in. Just, yeah, I'm quite happy doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Fulfilled. F well, I was... <laughs> time, time filled. <laughs> so, I wanted to ask you about, like, you, your materials, I've, uh, I've always found it, like, really dense. Like, it's... it's, it's Thanks yeah. very much. Like a fruitcake. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, um, how do you go about, like, your material? Do, do you ingest a lot of uh, a lot of books and films and stuff like that no, are you, are you don't, don't watch much don't watch many films um, read a bit not not as much as I used to stuff happens in life um, uh, try a thing out is that gonna be funny try it does it work and then sometimes you know lay it fallow for a couple of years come back to it put another sometimes deadlines you know you have to write a thing uh, that helps uh, don't really know yeah, okay, it's a mystery. That's it's good, mystery. right? It is a mystery, yeah. So, yes. I, I interviewed someone in a similar thing and asked them, where don't you get your ideas from? So, as a, cause, you know, so, so I don't get my ideas from other comics. Yeah. I don't watch other things and think, oh, I'll do that. I'll, I'll nick his voice or hers. <laughs> no, no. So, uh, I don't know where it'll. Um, stuff that things that happen, things I think about. So, about, I've got notebooks and about. You know, one percent of what I write in my notebooks ends up on stage. You know, uh, one percent of that survives. So my set is, is sort of like a hardened, like a sedimentary rock. Yeah. Of the things that have worked, that I still enjoy doing. That's what I tend to do. Okay. Although my my new show, I'm doing at Edinburgh this year, is called Simon Henry Sings Soren Kierkegaard. Mm. So uh, I've learned a, a, the whole section of Soren Kierkegaard's. Uh, writing and then uh, I talk about it. I've only done it once, one preview. Yeah. Which is, uh, you know, and it went very well, which is a, a worry. You shouldn't do. Yeah. It's, it's far too early. I mean, the next one will be awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. First one I found quite, go quite well, and then with my experience, it's downhill after yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah, so philosophy, philosophy do, you, do you read a lot of philosophy? I mean, well, so you don't read much, no. but. I've been reading a lot, I've been rereading yeah. a lot of uh, Kierkegaard because I. I had this vague impression that it was, there was lots of hilarious stuff in there, and there sort of <laughs> is, but you have to go through quite a lot of dense, very, yeah. very dense, uh, before you get to the, the beautiful, pithy sentence, but yeah. it needed all that build-up. 
I don't know. Um, is, Dan- is he Danish? He is Danish. Yeah. He was. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Not anymore. He was Danish, no. Gave that up. Well, I think he remained Danish <laughs> after death. He, he, he is Danish, but yeah, he's, he's long gone. Yeah. I, I think my most memorable bit of philosophy of his is the, is it Three Stages of Life? Is that, was that yeah, his? Stages on Life's Way, yeah. Yeah. Three, is it, I can't remember what they are, but I remember oh. reading that and going, yeah, I think I'll agree with that. Well, oh, here's what he said. Uh, some people sit in the church and uh, uh, imagining that the priest is an actor and they are critics. But in fact, you sitting in the church, you are the actors and the priest is merely the prompt trying to help you remember your lines. <laughs> Uh, nice way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's not a... <laughs> but, uh, he hasn't written your, your hour for you, is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> not yet. No, I did about half an hour on, on him. So yeah. We're quietly confident we'll get there. Oh, great. So by the end of August, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we'll be too exhausted to care. It'll be, it works out either way. Okay, so you do it the old-fashioned way, not the modern com- comedian's way, where they have it ready for Edinburgh to get something... I get, I get it as ready as I, I yeah. can, but the, the actual the process of doing a show a lot, uh, so I try and have a new show for Edinburgh, the um, process of doing a show a lot is what makes it better, I think. Yeah. So and it, you need to do it for a month somewhere else. Mm. So I think the right size do a thing where they, well, they used to anyway, uh, they'd take one year they'd break a show in from scratch in Edinburgh yeah. and then take it around the world yeah. and end up at Melbourne. And then another year, they'd do a show from scratch in Melbourne, take it around the world, and end up with Edinburgh. So every two years, they'd have a sort of honed thing. Yeah. Um, whereas I, I just tend to, I always do more or less the same to try and, I, yeah. I like to end up with a good thing at the end of the month. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, it'll be as good as it can be, probably. I'm not <laughs> yeah. deliberately going up. Although I did do that for about four years, I deliberately went up with nothing. That's what I did. But that was, was an annual general, general meeting, it was called, and the audience put in motions to be discussed. So it was, the idea of forcing me not to do old material but to do uh, make stuff up as mm. I went along. And I imagine, did it that didn't have work. mix? It didn't work. <laughs> oh, it did work. It worked, yeah. it worked brilliantly sometimes. Yeah. And terribly. Like, I remember one day it came in and they, uh, normally there would have been like seven, 20, maybe 30 people. There was a hundred, it was jammed. And uh, I don't know what, what? And I got, uh, so they all, I hadn't really worked out the dynamics of what would happen if everyone put in a bit of paper. So I had a hundred bits of paper to read out. And, um, and half, halfway through, someone sh- held up a review at me, like I was a vampire and it was a mirror. <laughs> like, yeah, it was a, a five-star review and I hadn't seen it. And that's why yeah. they were there. These were all di- the bound to be disappointed uh, five-star review hunter people. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but basically all I ended up doing was reading out these bits of paper. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> read up for, for, for an hour. And then that got reviewed. They got, got a two-star review saying, basically, he just really gets the audience to write things down and read them out. That isn't really a show. <laughs> uh, so it took me about three years to work out a way of getting a, a sort of moderate balance of the improvised element yeah. which I was keen to work on. And, uh, you know, some structural bits that uh, if, you know, if there's not enough from that. So what it tended to be in the end was like anything I'd written that year that I wanted to do, plus audience uh, motions to be discussed, but not worry about the time. That was the crucial thing. Don't think, oh, I've got all these to get through. So the show uh, carried on after the time slot in the pub across the road or yeah. in, in the park, in the art gallery. Yeah. So that everyone's piece of paper gets uh, treated, you know, it's dealt with. Yeah. But uh, the show doesn't end till they're all done. And then you'd have to worry about it. Then it's 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 the actual panic of oh, I've got all these to get through. Yeah, so you're never going to think of anything. What's the longest it went on for then? About four, five hours. It was dark. It was getting around. Not really dark, but it was yeah, it was a long time. Because it, oh, it starts early, doesn't it? It, it, it did it start is, early in a yeah, show. I, I've I, I don't know how anyone's funny in the day. What what are your views? No, on I don't. No. <laughs> it's harder, right? I think so. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, was that an extra challenge for you? Did you take it on on purpose or not? No, it was just that was the time slot I got given, and um, I stayed in it for <laughs> ten years. You know, uh, I'm slightly later. I'm nearly, uh, I think, half past four. No, oh, wow. or four o'clock. Ten to four. Ten to four. Does that mean you're getting better, or <laughs> is it like? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's It'll be pretty... on at nine o'clock in <laughs> ten years' time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, was it? Uh, was Daniel Kitson was doing a show at ten a.m., which I thought was a brilliant brilliant innovation 
the, the ideal one right in Edinburgh would be if you could get a show if you could do a show at dawn right with a uh, different uh, different show each day like yeah. a cabaret sort of thing with different acts if the people see that show okay then then they'll they're yours because they'll be up at dawn the next day and there's nothing else on it's one of those great unused time slots comedy at dawn comedy yeah. I, I can't well, dueling perhaps that's really <laughs> appropriate I can't even yeah have a you'd have to have a jewel in there definitely oh, yeah <laughs> if you're going to use the dawn time yeah. slot I can't even get I, I can't even get put my clothes on at dawn I'm not I'm like functioning well I'm more imagining people staying up all night yeah 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 well, what, what, to, to see the show at dawn but once they've done that they'll sleep all day yeah. they'll be up all night they're coming back um, Edinburgh's changed so much hasn't it when, when did you stop going out there uh, Eighty six. What like could you tell me like some of the stuff that you've noticed that's oh, it's changed? It's all fields. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was um what's changed? Uh, what's the main thing that you think has changed if you say from when you first went up to where the, Edinburgh is the now? The balance of power has shifted in al- almost entirely to the uh, old town. Well it has done, but it's, I think the new town's coming back slightly, but for for many years, like well there, there used to be just the assembly rooms the Pleasants and the Gilded Balloons, the three sort of main yeah. comedy, mainly comedy stroke theatre venues. Uh, but with the uh, upside down purple cow being placed in the middle of Teviot Square, Teviot Row, or whatever it's called, that place, um, and then you've got the Gilded Balloon, the new Gilded Balloon next to it, the Pleasants Dome, you've got you know, the, the main Pleasants all on that side. Yeah. And uh, the huge outdoor drinking arenas as well. There was one year I was standing there, a, few, uh, a couple of years ago, it was Saturday night, it was just jammed with people. And uh, I overheard someone say to someone, a woman said to a man, so what have you been to see? And he goes, I haven't been seeing it. See? I haven't been seeing it. And it was, for a lot of people, it's just the buzz. You can yeah. actually just get off on the buzz, the excitement of being in a huge outdoor drinking arena. Yeah, there's a bit of theatre going on. Yeah. But anyway, now the new town has got its own outdoor drink yeah. arena uh, on the um, on George Street. Is it George Street? Yeah. Oh, cool. So, like, when you <coughs> when you first went up there, what what was the main thought? And why why did you go up there when you first the first time you went up there? Uh, I've never been. Never been. Yeah. Really? And did you guys a performer the first time? Yes, you went up there? I went up. Was in a, a show called uh, Jane Austen Astronaut? Question mark. <laughs> well. What, what can you? Any? So we, we would stay, lived on a floor of a room. People used to step over you in the morning. Uh, what was the show about? It was a sketch show. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I did, I did a bit of my stand up as the security guard. I was like, Good evening, I am a security guard. I have a few security guard jokes for you. How many security guards does it take to change a light bulb? One. We're not stupid. <laughs> and some more of that. Um, do you ever do the security guard anymore? No, never, except just now. <laughs> wow, it's an exclusive. <laughs> Occasionally, if I'm really desperate, I whip that out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so well, I don't think it was a good show. There was also doing a, was, there was a play on as well. And on the first night, I got drunk. Tout ça change. Um, and the director, producer, Persuaded me to be follow spot operator in the, his, the other thing, he was a sketch show, but the other main thing he was doing was a production of Zola's Germinal, uh, where everyone dressed in black and didn't wear shoes. It was very serious. And uh, they didn't want applause at the end. I had to leave it like that. Anyway, I was follow spot operator and I also played the police. Like, I represented the entire police in with a strobe light, I think, and slow motion. I had to come on and sort of, uh, but I didn't have the black clothes, I didn't look anything. <laughs> Uh, and so, sometimes I fell asleep doing the follow spot operator, <laughs> and on the day I lost my virginity up Arthur's seat, I still go back to look for it. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I didn't turn up, so something else I'd do it. But I, I amazing experience. Wow, so you, out sorry, just to you lost your virginity up at Arthur's Edinburgh. Seat. Yeah, up Arthur's seat. Up Arthur's seat, I did Yeah. Oh, I know. Wow. Yeah. So it really does. A lot One of them, I've got, I've got a whole. Oh, no, not virginity. Keys. I lost my keys. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I've got a spare set, it's alright. <laughs> when, when did you do your first show up in Edinburgh? Um, your first, like your Simon Monnery, the Simon, Simon Monnery no, no, show. No, did a, did a, did a, a double act, God and Jesus. Yeah. A couple of years, and then I was at the Comedy Zone, I don't know, must be 80s, 88, yeah. late 80s. Uh, so that was, I was 
when I was being Alan Parker at Morrie, but I was you know, one of several. Yeah. It was Mark Lamont's compere, uh, normally, Chris and George, Stuart Lee and me, Alan Parker. Is Morrie. that where you first met Stuart or were you friends with him before? Uni? No, we were friends with him. He was at. Um, uh, oh, yeah, he was at Oxford, different... you were at Cambridge. Yeah, yeah sorry. But I think I met him. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose it was. Really... It's hard find hard to remember. How do you meet people? Yeah. <laughs> On the um, at the comedy zone. <laughs> yeah, or just sort of in the milieu. Yeah. Um, every other Monday or something. And when did uh, uh, excuse me if I get the uh, name wrong here? Is it Club Zara? Club. Club. Two years, yeah. Club Zarathustra. Yeah. When did that start? <laughs> Roughly, like. Late eights, that's Someone sent me an email the other day saying it's the 20th anniversary. Or you wanted to put on a 20th anniversary gig, and then so I'm not sure. So for, for people who may not know about it, what was what was Club Zarathustra? Uh, so to do something other than stand up. Um, I don't know. Quite what it was. Uh, I I hosted it as a um, the league against Stadium, which was a, uh, a Mr. Loser's Revenge Upon the World, so it's kind of antagonistic towards the audience. Yeah. With strange sketches and odd props. Okay. Uh, I think it was a, we, had a, we had a device, the um, self-knowledge impregnator, if anyone heckled, it took uh, four men to carry it. It was a huge box with a professional camera flash at the back, and the word cunt uh, cut out of wood at the front with a very thin load of gauze. So if someone heckled, the, the siren go, would go off, <laughs> This, this thing we brought out and brought over to the person who'd heckled and I'd say are you aware of what you are and then <laughs> what about now and uh, the word cunt would be um, uh, burned into their retina for, uh, for uh, you know a good five minutes the thing is no, no, people used to heckle to have that counterproductive it was it became known it was kind of a me 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 uh, it was a bit of fun. That sort of, yeah. Yeah, that's Just sort of pushing thing. Just pushing the envelope a bit. You used to begin with the bombardment of, of slides going, attention scum, you are nothing, absolutely nothing. Yeah. So but it, be it began by abusing its audience then. <laughs> then it went down over there. Uh, yeah, then it sounds like they kind of uh, liked, liked the abuse. Yeah. And it, who was in it? It was you, Stuart. Roger Mann, Kevin Eldon, uh, Sally Phillips. I mean, at different times with different people. Yeah. Johnny Vegas came down it once. Where was it? It's Stoke Newington. It, it originally was at the Market Tavern in Islington. Yeah. We did it as a, a weekly, was it monthly? Weekly club, I think. And we had a band with all different, all the different instruments in each corner. Uh, so it was quad, quad sound made live. Uh, who else? Um, uh, Julian Barrett was in it. He's in one of the pictures. Laurie Lixamo, op singer. Yeah. Richard Thomas, keyboards. Wow. Yeah, it was full on. So, did it feel like what was the comedy circuit like in those days? Were you like the standout alternative night, or was there like, like new, to... what you would, I suppose, call new alternative? I guess. I've no idea. No. Like, if you're doing anything, you don't know what else is going on in the yeah, city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even now, <laughs> really. You know. Out the link. Yeah. So there may well have been other things going on. Yeah. There. Just not, not of interest. So there wasn't well, a circuit. Well. Uh, well, there was a circuit. Yeah. Yeah, there was a circuit. Were you on it? Yeah, the comedy. The, so I did gigs normally yeah, yeah, yeah. as Alan Parker was the security guard or where I was doing. But then this was a sort of labour of love gang of people together. Yeah. What yeah, else yeah. can we do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, was there, the circuit. Are there any gigs you were doing then that you still do now? Jeez. Sorry to test your memory. A good one. What's still going? King's Head Crouch Yeah. Yeah, I'm cartoon at Clapham. That's gone. Red Rose gone. Some you know, the big comedy store. That's still there. Well, yeah. it's not where it, it's probably moved. So, did you ever play the comedy? Did, did you during that period were you doing the comedy store? Or they don't, they're yeah. famously don't do character stuff, do they? No, he didn't like me. I mean, I, I, the only time I played the comedy store was replacing someone else, and it would always go well. And then he'd uh, he'd go, oh, must put you in, must put you in. And he'd ring up, ring up on Monday, and ring up Monday. He goes, oh no, sorry. <laughs> And that happened about three times. I'm not going to do it. Not <laughs> ringing him on the Monday, and yeah. Um, what other clubs are still going? No, can't I'll have to think of one. <laughs> okay, so that's changed a bit then. No, but it's interesting because well, cl like, clubs. I don't know what the lifespan of a club is, but they, you know, I think the Chuckle Club was the longest running till it closed. But they did twenty-five years yeah. at least. 
It's long enough, isn't it? Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> now, I'm just interested in like the uh, the clubs are a feaster thing because it seems like every every sort of new wave of like group of comedians have a club like that. Mm. You know, there seems to be one now. It's like maybe. ACMS or something like that, yeah. you know, and uh, or shambles, but yeah. we'll, we'll see. I suppose history will judge which is the memorable one. But it just seems like uh, a group of like-minded acts always go. I, and I like think it's a really good idea. Like it's yeah, I think because of the social element to it, and you, you know, do it for yourselves. Yeah, I mean, I think that's how it. I mean, how comedy, the comedy circuit started was people taking a room above a pub and putting on. Things and they knew some people. There were there were at the time before there were acts who were established. There were everyone was unestablished acts. So you, you want to do something? Come and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it not. Well, I mean, the early days of the circuit when I first started, it was, there were more odd things around. It's got got a bit homogenised, really. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You and and I think I think one of the main causes of that is comedy courses. Like as soon as yeah. now now when you see an act. Who takes the mic out and puts the stand back there? You know they've done a comedy course, basically. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so uh, it's a shame, but I, I think there's still people like that out there who who could, who might. I mean, I was going to run a comedy course. I think the first day would be uh, how to set up a gig. You know, you should do you should do the whole thing rather yeah. than like, just putting more and more stand ups into the circuit. You should yeah. be creating more venues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mic technique is quite important you have to move the stand. I didn't know that. Yeah, move the stand. But like, like, like American comics, I always always hold the mic like a like, like, like they're a gunsling or something like <laughs> down there. I used to support Dennis Leary for two weeks at the Bloomsbury Theatre. Okay. And after about the first night, I didn't really want to hear it anymore because it was the same every night. But I used to sit outside and just listen to the rhythm. Yeah. Which was something like Barry Manilow skull. So that that sort of. So they just do like, well, British comics, you know, the UK, they tend to sort of hold it like close up to them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's funny. And you best think, not to use it. Yeah. What, well, you think best not to use it? Sometimes I think that. Yeah. The only thing is, you know, voice is going like, in a big room, it's a bit hopeless, but but a lot of rooms, say that, like the size of the room we're in now, you don't need one. No. Can I, you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's, um, it is actually a distancing device. Yeah. As well as you know, it's an instrument, but it's a distance device. I remember seeing uh, Tony Benn once, uh, R.I.P. Um, uh, in Edinburgh, and the first half of his show was him uh, describing his achievements, and the second half was him describing his achievements, uh, but with questions. He wanted questions from the audience. He wanted yeah. alternate questions for left-wing re reasons. He wanted alternate questions by a man and a woman for reasons of, of sexual balance. Now that proved very, very difficult because the uh, staff were having to go around with microphones. And then they'd give a microphone to someone or get, get it ready for the next question, but then realise, oh no, that's that's a woman talking. So I've got to take I've got to find a man. He got very confident. And um, eventually someone managed to ask a question of the right gender. And then Tony was going, Whoa, whoa, where 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 are you? Well, because it came out of the speakers. Yeah. And eventually someone just had, had enough and just shouted out a question, you oh thank God. And then uh, described his achievements. Um, <laughs> But uh, it made me think, oh yeah, no, it's, yeah, actually, it's a strange thing. We're completely over it now. Yeah. It's a bit like when I use a camera in my show, like I speak through a camera, and there's something a little bit odd about that. But but there's something odd about these microphones. But we're over, we're over it. Like you've got old film people using a microphone. They sort I am the king. Uh, I know that's that film. Um, the uh, but like you know, since the sixties, you swing them round. It's just sort of yeah. perfectly natural. It's also the symbol of comedy, isn't it? Like, sort of the mic on the stand. Yeah. There's something a bit ugly about it sometimes. I think if you could not use it, great. Yeah, I think it. Uh, it's interesting. I think it is the symbol of a of a stand up club, mic on the stand, mm. and and probably the first lesson in any comedy course, like I said, how right. to take it out, out of the stand. stand. <laughs> yeah, because like you know, if you're not yeah. taught, you don't know, do you? No, Jimbo he used to do uh, um, a whole thing about not getting, not quite being able to. Get out. There's a lot can be done with that. Yeah, yeah. Brian Gittins, uh, Brian Gittins just out. knocks it out really? straight away like that. Yeah, it just comes on and it falls. Well, and he tries to get it out when it just falls everywhere. It's really funny. Um, <laughs> uh, so cool. Let's uh, do some quick fire questions. Okay. Oh, this draw never works. Bit of glue you want there? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, what makes you laugh? Uh, 
things happening, funny things. My dog. Dog. That's that Barcola. is that is a popular answer on this. Dogs. Yeah. But yeah, cats are more popular online. What's yeah. what's that? What's that about? <laughs> uh, I haven't laughed today. Uh, I particularly. Oh. I think something funny that happened. No. No, but there's nothing in particular that makes you laugh. Do you, do you are you do you watch Children. a lot of comedy? No. Or not interested in that at all? Uh, maybe I wouldn't say not interested. Yeah. But no, I I've seen a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I do get to see a lot as well. But I don't necessarily go out to watch comedy. No. As in, I'm more likely to get some compé or something. I'll, I'll probably catch a bit of yeah. people. Um, no, earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yeah. makes you laugh. No, dogs. Lots of, dogs and children. Dogs and children. No, loads of, no, loads of people's acts maybe not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, who don't you get? Who don't I get? Yeah. Is there anyone who's like... You, everyone really likes you, and I just don't get it. I, well, I never used to get Eddie Izzard. Okay. Right, because years, years and years ago, when he used, he used to compare the uh, Screaming to be Murdered in Hampton Court, and if you were one of the acts waiting to go on, it was awful, because he wouldn't be getting many laughs or anything, but he'd, he'd just be going, uh, which he turned into an art form yeah. later, but at that, that time, it was just like, could you just get on with it? And he's about to bring you on, and it's, oh, something else. So, and I had that, and it's very hard to find someone funny when you, you've got a sort of dislike for them. Yeah. To the extent that you, you, I'd be in a room and you'd be storming it like, every other Monday or something. I just couldn't, couldn't find it funny. It was, and I wasn't alone, there were, there were others on yeah. the circuit in the same boat. And then one day in Edinburgh, I think I saw him do the, the Sanj Ki Swang. Um, and I, I laughed and I had to go and tell him afterwards, like, yeah, I've never found you funny, but I do now. <laughs> It's like, it's like eating your own. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, that's it. Yeah, because I think um, when I did that interview with Ian Stewart before, you you said so, uh, something I wanted to ask you actually about was like how you were talking about how he was very commercially minded with his with his act. Who? Eddie Izzard. Oh, like, how, you said no. You said it was like uh, it was like well his whole career thing was like quite well thought out with like playing. Did I say? Yeah. That? yeah, yeah. Talking out my ass. Okay. I have no idea All what right, his plan is. If it's well thought out. Oh, I thought you said like. Oh, all right. Well, not sorry. Then. Okay. No. All right. Um, so. Uh, I deny it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry if I've dropped you in anything. Oh, there. No. Um, okay. Uh, Richard Pryor, Bill Hicks, or Jerry Seinfeld. Ooh. Richard Pryor, Bill Hicks. Uh, probably Richard Pryor. Okay, any I, reason I, why? Or? I haven't seen any of his. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bored with the others. Yeah, um, yeah Seinfeld, uh, yeah, it's a bit, it's all right. Uh, yeah. Bill Hicks. Yeah. I mean, I don't, yeah. I've never seen any of them live. So yeah, 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 okay. So that's hard to judge, so, I guess. It's hard. Do you have to do you have to choose one? No, I have to choose. None of them. I don't really none try. of them. I think we should probably, probably like one. I've only seen little bits. I don't like yeah. to study it. Yeah, so. he's a very funny guy. I think. Yeah. Um, okay, what's the best gig you've ever done? Uh, uh, probably this year, the last August, I was sitting outside. I finished my show. Yeah. Having my customary pint of cider afterwards. Um, Scott Agnew runs up uh, the road and goes, "Simon, it was an all-day AIDS um, benefit." Uh, for Terence Higgins Trust or, or, or Waverley Care. Anyway, at the local gay pub just over yeah. it, they, they had a gap, an act hadn't come, could you come and, and, and do a bit? I went, yeah, sure. Go there. And it, oh, I thought, oh, this is going to be a tough, tough audience. They've been drinking all day, um, they're all standing up, but they were fantastic. Yeah. It was just the best audience. Like, to, don't, even though it's, you know, sort of chaotic and they were just. Just the best audience uh, until I, I blew it at the end by doing my Waverly Care Trust joke, <laughs> and then I got booed off. <laughs> so just, oh, All right, so it went well till, till the end. Probably, yeah, that's what I remember. And um, worst gig you've ever done? I mean, you sort of treasure worst gigs. Yeah. I, uh, I used to do open spots at the tunnel clubs. Okay. Uh, where they'd uh, boo you on, <laughs> and, and and boo in the middle, and then boo you on. Uh, coins. Coined off, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of a, a game. 
I mean, they look, bah, bah, they do it like in a round system, like off, off, fuck, off, 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 fuck, off. Yeah, that's quite elaborate. So, yeah, that, that, I suppose that isn't the worst thing, just you know, complete animal hatred. Uh, yeah, away. yeah. What would be the worst is sort of an indifference. I've done gigs in uh, a, a, like a college ball in more or less a corridor. Oh, I know, Tottenham. <laughs> uh, a festival go. in Tottenham. And I was, I was asking one of the security room, do you know where the uh, comedy tent is? And it turned out I was standing next to it. It was there, but it, there was no obvious sign. In fact, there was no even sign of how you get in. And the way it was around the, around the back, just a white cube sort of thing <laughs> with, a, with a roof. And it faced, well, it just faced away from from where anyone was. The only way we'd get an audience, I was compare, so I was there for quite a long time. If someone was going the wrong way to the toilet, they might go past. You could just try and tempt them in for about a minute and then, then they're gone. So it's kind of a very, very fleeting audience. We, I mean, we got six, seven people in there at one point. Wow. But obviously they had to go. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, that sounds that's horrific, good, yeah. Good. But I've done a... a played a uh, 500-seat theatre in Toronto to one person. Uh, there were three till the interval. <laughs> and uh, I remember coming out after the interval, uh, you know, uh, banging out to the whole room thinking, oh, something's changed, and now two people have gone. It's, it's just you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> How did that happen? Did they not promote it? It was a matinee. Basically, uh, this, this guy was a, an accountant. He wanted to be a theatrical producer, but by the time he turned 30, so he decided to put on a comedian and he opened up this, this theatre, it's a big old church that had been dark for five years. He wanted Dave Gorman, he couldn't get Dave Gorman, he picked me out of the brochure right, to do the League Against Stadium. And I'd done the League Against Stadium in Melbourne, in, in Australia, and I knew it didn't work. As in, like there's something about an English voice going, attention to come, you are nothing, absolutely nothing. There's like, what, what are you being rude to us for? It only ever worked in London, Edinburgh, Manchester, like yeah. the place it worked. It's just sort of, and it's fragile if you don't like that. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not going to put, pull you back with some aphoristic thoughts. Um, so I kept saying, oh. And so I started off, you know, about 200 people in the first day, down and down, and, and we've got these matinees. He booked these matinees on, in the hope, obviously, that. Um, and I was like, oh, please, can we cancel the matinees? <laughs> please, can I do something else? Can I do Alan Parker and Warwick? Because I know, because I've done, been to Canada before, I knew that worked. Yeah. Like, Stop, please don't make me. Do <laughs> I believe in the. You know, quite, he stuck to his guns. I believe in the show, you want to do it. So doing these. But a lonely five weeks. I remember going to people. Five uh, weeks? Five weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah, with matinees. <laughs> matinees. Um, yeah, but once you've been through that, once you've had, you know, 500 seat theatre on one person, it's not much more to fear in terms of low numbers. No, no. And, and the bigger the number, the easier it is. Really. I mean, the, the bloke laughed all the way through. <laughs> it's just didn't have any friends, see? Yeah. Oh. Um, who's the funniest person you know who doesn't work in comedy? Anyone? I thought, oh, Steve Cheek, I suppose. Steve Cheek. I mean, he did work in comedy for a bit, though. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Yeah. What's he do now? He's a lecturer. Cool. Um, okay, if you weren't a comedian, what, what would you do? Nothing artistic. Basically. I'd like to uh, carpentry, uh, boat builder, I'd like to do it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Architect, designer, like to like inventor, I can invent things. Uh, Have you invented anything? Yeah. Like? What have I invented? Uh, well, like, a device for. <laughs> You're right, I haven't. <laughs> what have I invented? Um, lately. Um, uh, windmill. Collapsible uh, camping windmill. Okay. I haven't, I haven't built it yet. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Um, I had a friend once who said he was going to invent a time machine. Oh. Yeah. I don't. I haven't seen him for a while. No. Well, you. You know, I wouldn't expect to win. Cover in the past. You ever missed him. <laughs> um, okay. Lastly, what's, in your opinion, the best club to play? No. I quite like um, ACMS, it was, it was fun. Yeah. 
Bang said the gun. That's quite interesting. Oh, they, they issue the audience with percussion. Okay. Your clubs, of course, Harry, if you're running one, they're, they're <laughs> by far the finest. Um, <laughs> React always does that if I ask that question specifically to get like yeah. a promo. What's your, what's, what's your, oh, well, it's Shambles, it's of your course. Club, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just interested, like, if there's any particular club where it's like that is the club where it's like. It's, it's just, more like a particular night. Okay, a yeah. Night would be great. Uh, yeah, ACMS is always a good audience, isn't it? Like, it yeah. always, you can do. You can experiment and yeah. do some something a bit different, and they go for it. Actually, you can probably always do that. It's just yeah. you give yourself that license, but you can probably always do that. Yeah, I've seen John Hegley do. You know, you think, oh, that's a tough crowd. And go and do a serious poem, and, and they went with it. And yeah, I was, you know, oh, oh, because well, it's a self fulfilling prophecy. You think, oh, it's a tough crowd. I got to do my lowest common denominator base material, and then you sort of make that happen. <laughs> so sometimes you have to. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, cool. Is there anything uh, you want to plug at the moment? No. No, nothing. Uh, your new show, obviously, up in Edinburgh. Yep, yeah, that'll be good by then, probably. Um, and uh, when does this go out? Uh, I'll probably put it up in the next couple of weeks. Oh, I kind of, yeah, might be any time. Yeah, well, yeah. in about a couple of weeks, I'm doing a file on school at the Udderbelly. That could be through the. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're sharing. And what are you doing a, that on Go Fast? Oh, it's on Go Fast Strike already, that show, right? No, no, this is, uh, no, no, uh, yeah, well, the f File Macca was the first one, yeah. that's on DVD. Yeah. Last, this, last year's one's coming out on DVD, and this is the new one with guests. Yeah, yeah, so how's that working? It well, works really well. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so uh, I, I do less. Yeah. Uh, 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 and then there's someone else's face, and they do pictures. And all my guests so far, but, yeah, it's been quite a, wow, this is exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, all right, and that's at the underbelly. Uh, Utterbelly. Utterbelly, even, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I, the, I lose right, no, track of all the, the purple cow on the south. Cow thing. euphemisms. Wicked, it was. Thanks very much for coming. My pleasure, au revoir. <laughs> See you later. Ray <laughs> <laughs>